Hi, everybody. Gene here. Welcome to the Tapping Q&A podcast, where every single week we answer the most common and uncommon questions about tapping and EFT so you can eliminate self-sabotage and take the action that you want. Just to give you a heads up, we are pushing back one more week, the continuation of our nine-part series on the healing fundamentals. As the world continues to change, we're trying to create resources that help us to respond in a way that is thoughtful for this particular moment. And since the content in that nine-part series is evergreen and can show up whenever, I decided to push it back one more week. If you haven't done so already, please make sure you check out last week's episode, episode 464 on compassion fatigue and how compassion fatigue is different than burnout. If you are a person who is working with clients or showing up as a helper in any way to the people in your life, it's a really valuable conversation. If you go to tappingqa.com slash 464 for episode 464, you will be able to find that episode. So claim it, recognize it, embrace it, address it, take action, and then educate and engage. This is Gene Montrestelli, and welcome to the Tapping Q&A podcast, recorded live to tape from Williamsburg in Brooklyn. This is episode 466, originally aired June 17th, 2020. Hi, everyone. I hope this finds you well wherever you are, and whatever time of day that this finds you, thanks for spending a little time with me today. Today, we're going to talk about a process that my friend has created called CREATE. It is an opportunity and a framework to deal with emotions when they come up in a particularly strong way, especially when we're responding to a moment in time and a moment in history in which things are uncertain. Before we jump into that, two quick announcements. The first is we have a free 10-part guide on how you can use tapping to eliminate self-sabotage. If you go to tappingqa.com and click on that big blue button, we will make sure you get that guide. Every single day, another part will come to you so that every morning in your inbox will be something that you can do that takes four or five minutes that's going to help you to eliminate self-sabotage. And over the course of the 10 parts, you're going to find those tools that are most useful and most effective for you. Tapping Q&A.com and click on the blue button. The other thing I want to do is I want to thank all of the amazing supporters of the Tapping Q&A podcast. This week, I'd specifically like to thank Mona and Anna Maria. They are the two most recent supporters of the podcast. So in addition to getting some amazing freebies because they're supporting it, they're also making sure that you get the opportunity to keep receiving this podcast. If you'd like to support the podcast and if you'd like to receive some awesome bonuses, all you need to do is go to tappingqa.com slash support. So over the course of the last number of weeks here in the United States and all over the world, there have been a number of protests in response to the murder of George Floyd, as well as a moment in history in which people are pushing back on 400 years, if not longer, of racial oppression and a system that is just not set up in a just way. And in the middle of all of that, it becomes a difficult thing to navigate in two ways. One is, how do we navigate our own internal emotions as we see what is going on? Not just the incidents that are inciting this, but the protests that are happening, the choices that our friends are making, the way people are having civil or uncivil conversations online. And in the middle of all of that, we land in a really particular emotional space. The second thing is, whenever there is a moment in history that becomes galvanizing, that gives us the opportunity to look at things in a new way and to move forward, the question then becomes, how do I show up in a way that is most helpful? And so last week, my friend Jane Nicole had posted a snippet of an interview that she had done for a radio program around this process called CREATE. And CREATE, as you'll see in this conversation, is a step-by-step way to break apart what you are feeling in the moment, understand where it is coming from, processing and healing those emotions that then put us in a position which allows us to move forward in a thoughtful, productive way. Because I don't know about you, when I am working from a place of passion, it's really easy for me to do something that is motivated by good and is not done in a thoughtful way that sometimes not only is unhelpful, but it can actually be harmful to what I'm trying to accomplish because of the way I'm showing up. 
The other thing in this conversation is I recognize my privilege. I recognize the fact that I am a person who has walked adjacent to this problem and have been a part of the system, but have not been impacted in the way that so many have as they navigate all of this. And so I have been trying to listen as much as I can and seek out voices who have much more experience with what is going on to learn from them. And that's one of the reasons as well that I invited Jay Nicole on for this particular conversation. As I listened back and was editing the interview, I am still not sure if what I have my part of this conversation was useful or if my part of the conversation is self-indulgent or self-congratulatory. And so I am trying to learn and navigate all of that as well. And so know that I offer this um, with a spirit of trying to be helpful and trying to add something to a conversation that is really, really difficult. I thought it was really important after listening back to it, regardless of what I thought of my performance in the interview, um, what Jay Nicole has to say is really useful and really powerful that you'll actually hear in this conversation as she's breaking her process down the things that I learned in working with clients, not just working in this moment, but understanding how we process emotion and we work through it. You know, for a decade and a half, I've been working with people and it is always great to be in a situation where when we get an opportunity to hear someone else's process, to be able to recognize that they have something to offer that helps us to do the work that we do better. After the little stinger at the end of the interview, I know lots of people just check out because there are announcements afterwards. After that's done, I want you to come back because there's one final thing that I need to share with you that is useful to that conversation. And then after I share that, if you want to check out, you are more than welcome to. So here is my conversation with Jay Nicole Ralph. We are recording this on Friday the 12th with this going out next Wednesday, with that being the context, what's your last couple of weeks been like? My last couple of weeks have been very up and down. Mm -hmm. I have had a lot of emotional response to what's going on in the world, to seeing the protests and the response to the George Floyd tragedy, And then also figuring out a way to navigate through that and help other people navigate through that has been the ups of that, of those emotions. So yeah, it's, it's, it's been a lot of that. And I I feel like I'm riding an up wave right now and and being able to figure out how to navigate and now carry this message to others and helping them how to navigate as well. That's awesome. One of the main reasons why we're having this conversation is last week I saw you, you're earlier this week, I saw you post something online where you're having a conversation with somewhere else. And you were talking about a framework that you had created to navigate the emotional roller coaster of what is going on, as well as not just self-regulating, but responding. And I would just, I would love it if you just kind of walk us through that at a high level and then we'll pick it apart and I'll ask you some questions and see what that experience is like. Sure. Yes, yes, yes. So, Yes, this this framework that I have created is called CREATE. Mm -hmm. And it's a way for us as conscious people, as aware and enlightened people to positively impact the world through our response to what's going on. And I know a lot of me, I, I personally was one of those people at the beginning of the pandemic and even right after the George Floyd tragedy occurred that I, my response was, to dismiss or even ignore what was going on and just stay in my own safe little bubble. Mm -hmm. But then when I I showed up to my coaching session with you, Jean, in tears, and then the whole rest of the week I was crying on and off, I realized that trying to stay safe in my own little bubble was not the way to deal with it. My emotions had just come to a head that week because I hadn't been dealing with the things because Mm -hmm. I had been trying to push things aside or dismiss things or push things down. So um, that week, I actually, my wheels got to turning out like, this is not, this is not the way to deal. What can I do? And I came up with this acronym through my coaching as well. Actually, I was coaching some of my other clients through dealing with everything going on. And and one of my clients was like, oh, this is good stuff. I need an acronym. How can I better remember this? And so that 
kind of motivated me to come up with this acronym called CREATE, C-R-E-A-T-E. So claim it, Mm -hmm. recognize it, embrace it, address it, take action, and then educate and engage. So I'm talking about your feelings now. So Mm -hmm. the C would be to claim that you're feeling something. Don't Mm -hmm. dismiss it or try to push it away, but claim, okay, I see what's going on and I'm having some sort of response to it. Right. Then the R is recognize, you know, recognize what that feeling is. Is it anger? Is it sadness? Is it frustration? Is it fear? Is it overwhelm? Is Mm -hmm. it confusion? Is it exhaustion? You know, recognize what the feeling is. And then E, embracing it. Embrace the feeling. If you have to cry tears, cry tears. If you have to cry out in anguish, cry out in anguish. If you have to yell, you know, yell safely. Don't do it. Don't yell out at somebody, but go somewhere privately and yell. You know, don't push it down. Let it come out how it's going to come out. And then we can address the feeling. And, And I think this is a big place where your your EFT tapping can come in. We can address mm-hmm. it through tapping. We can address it through clearing. If you know how to clear, or if you have clearing um, mechanisms or modalities, writing in your journal, meditating, talking to somebody, a therapist or a coach, but address the feelings as they have come out or after they have come out. Because feelings are so important. And you actually taught me this, Gene, that they're information pointing something mm-hmm. out to you. If you're feeling angry, it may be pointing out an injustice. If you're feeling fear and maybe pointing out a belief that needs to be changed either mm-hmm. within yourself or within the, 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 the greater society, you know, and then the T is for taking action after you've addressed the feeling and figured out what it is pointing out to you, take action on that thing. Taking action could just be educating yourself further. It could be creating a piece of art. It could be writing to your local state or national representative. It could be donating to a cause. It could be writing a letter, a script, a post that is taking action. And then E would be to educate and engage. The educated piece is educating others on what you're doing and why Mm -hmm. it's important, um, what you've learned, you know, if, if part of your taking action was educating yourself. Also educating others on what you've been feeling and why, Mm because many people just don't know. They're still in the dark and they're scared to say it, but they may be open to hearing what you have to say. Some people are just overwhelmed and and don't know where to start. And you may be able to help them, you know, if, if, you know, with your action or educating on them, what action you're taking and engaging in conversations because people need to hear your perspective. But, but, but I really want to go back to the T, the taking action, because that is so important before going to the educating and engaging because your taking action is 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 the change that needs to happen before we begin to educate others. I think the thing that us tapping folks do and anybody into the transformational space, the first thing that we want to do is we want to do the A, is we want to just go in and we want to fix, we want to address the emotion, we want to do that thing. Yeah. And so one of, one of the things that I, the, one of the reasons why when you shared this online that it resonated so deeply with me was those first three steps of, you know, like just saying I'm feeling something instead of even trying to name the feeling and name why I'm feeling it. Like oftentimes we're rushing ahead in what's going on. And I always, I don't know, I consistently have a better sense of understanding when I go slow and, and I take the no ounce and I take the pieces through it. And when it comes to clearing any sort of emotional experience that I'm having and trying to understand whether or not it's a proportionate emotional response or it's disproportionate emotional response, I have to really engage with it. And so by saying, I have a feeling, this is what the feeling is, it's telling me something true about my experience. Yeah. And, you know, it's so often this idea that we think that the emotions are the enemy because when we're feeling really emotional, it gets in the way of us doing the things that we want to do. It feels like we don't like, and I say, we don't have control. What I'm really saying is the conscious mind that is driving ourselves or we think is driving ourselves moment to moment has lost control to this other part. It's -hmm. almost like the emotions have taken the wheel. And so by going to this gentle part at the beginning of saying, I'm feeling something, this is what it is. I'm going to deal with that. Now I can start moving forward. I find that I 
take more thoughtful, deliberate, grounded action. And it doesn't mean that I'm making these actions emotionlessly, but I have a much clearer sense of what the emotion is. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, it's, it's like, the, it's like the, the silly t-shirt that occasionally I see people wearing that says, you know, don't judge me for what I said when I was hungry. Yes. Because that's a really particular resource state that impacts the way the way you navigate the world. I mean, it's, it's the reason why in the last couple of years, Merriam-Webster added the word hangry to the dictionary, because it, it really is an experience. Like, our resource state impacts the choices that we make. And as a general rule, it's better the more well-resourced we are, the better choices we're going to make. But particularly when we're having conversations that are so raw with yeah. people around us who are having a really hard time. I can remember... So I been in New York now for seven years. And for about a year, I dated a black woman. And being in New York and then dating her, like, exposed blind spots that I did not realize I had. Mm-hmm. Like, I thought, I thought I was significantly more self-aware than I actually was. Mm-hmm. And I had some friends visiting me here in the city. And I was sharing this experience... <laughs> And as I was sharing with them, oh, yeah, I have these blind spots. I'm really trying to understand how I deal with, with race and gender and culture. And they thought I was joking. Like, it was it was out wow. like for them. It felt like, it, like no, 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 no. You're one of the good guys. You, you, know, you taught anger management in a jail. And you've been doing social justice work for 25 years. And to be in a circumstance where, like, daily I'm getting a chance to recognize that. And how hard it is to have conversations when we're all really emotionally raw that how I can show up and be helpful without being a jackass, which I am prone to do from time to time (laughs) when I'm speaking from a place of passion. And by, I love the fact that you're claiming that we need to be doing our own work first and taking action in a micro way in the way that we can before we are trumpeting and dragging other people along and educating and claiming to be the person who is in the know and what we need to do next. And, Oftentimes when people are doing that, they're doing it from a really good hearted way and it's incompetent help is what it actually is. And it's showing up in a way that wants to be good and it's just not. I was one of those people. Yeah. I was one of those people that, and that, you know, that was another part of why I came up with that acronym. Again, I was having those conversations with people who were like, we need to do this. You need to do that. Da, 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 da. And then somebody asked me, well, well, what, did, what have you done to further the cause? And I was like, oop. Right. <laughs> Good question. Let me go. Let me take a step back and do yeah. my part. And yeah. now I can engage in these conversations. <laughs> in this moment in history, it is a good thing for all of us to be going through a process like this. But at any moment when we are having an emotional response to something, giving ourselves the opportunity to think, okay, what is the work I need to do internally before I go externally? And externally could be something that is large and global, but it also could be inside of my family. It also could be with my coworkers. It also could be with my friend group. And before I start pushing back in any particular way to ask the question first, what is the action and what is the work I'm doing internally before I start calling other people to be doing something really specific? Because I found, at least for me, that the more work I do and the more I try and understand, the more nuanced my response comes and the more clear of a communicator I become when I'm challenging the people around me, when I recognize the fact that maybe they haven't moved along as quickly as they might in any particular circumstance. As you are navigating something like this, other than using it as a framework, how, like, how have you been personally using this? Are you like sitting down and going for the check marks? Is it just something that you're internalized? Like how, how do you now approach something like this now that you have this really clear, effective framework? Yeah, for, for me, I have to focus mostly on the A, the addressing, mm-hmm. and the T, the taking action. The other, the other ones seem, well, the C too. The, the C, the claiming it. Yeah. The yeah. claiming, the claiming that I'm feeling something. Cause then that kind of puts the other things into motion naturally mm-hmm. for me. I, I tend to, once I'm realized, like I'm aware, Oh, I am having a response. I am feeling right. something. The other ones tend to come naturally. And for me, the, when I get to the addressing portion, I do a lot of my own meditating, writing in my journal. Mm-hmm. And if it gets 
really heavy, I'll do a clearing session with my coach or a tapping session, you know, with you or, or one of my coaches, one of my other coaches that, so that's, those are ways that I address. And then the one that I, I really do have to concentrate on is the T, the taking action, because I am one that likes to jump straight to the E. Let's, yeah. let's educate. Let's tell other people, you know, yeah. and, but it's like, nope, nope, nope. Do your part first. You know, have you done your research on the mm-hmm. people that are being are running in the upcoming election? Have you donated to a cause that's going to help yet? You know, have you have you posted any of this mm-hmm. educational material for others to to see? You know, so the T is where I have to a lot of times focus my attention. And I think I think any of us who are, are helpers, like it, 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 that's natural that we want to go to the E and the, that's the place that we want to be, you know, engaging and educating because part of it is we recognize the fact that, you know, if there's a group of us that are pushing in a particular direction, it appears that that is going to be um, more powerful because there's a lot of us doing that thing. The problem comes when, you know, we're not fully educated enough ourselves Yes, because then a whole bunch of us can be pushing in a direction that, you know, I, I'm sure you've had this circumstance as well as I over the course of the last week and a half of people doing really well-meaning things that when you see the social media post, you're just like, oh, no, oh, no, yeah. oh, no, yeah. no, yeah. no, no, you didn't think this one through. You yeah. don't know how this is being read. Yeah. And, and I've had I've had those conversations a few times yeah. these past few weeks, and it's it's been interesting because from my experience, I've experienced two different things. I've experienced people that are very defensive about mm-hmm. their, their viewpoint, their, per, their perspective, their point of view, and they're not budging. But then I have uh, encountered people um, that are mentioning things like you just mentioned, your blind spots. And yeah. that has been really heartwarming to see that more and more people are becoming aware of blind spots yeah. and, and speaking on those things mm-hmm. and trying to educate themselves so that they're no longer blind spots or so that they're at least a little more filled in. That yeah. has been heartwarming engaging with those in those conversations. And, and, and for me, it'll be just at the end of the month, seven years in New York. One of the single greatest gifts that New York has given me is its diversity. Yeah. Wandering around my neighborhood yeah. And even even in a city like this, things are are blocked off and you gather around people who are like. But if you travel any distance in the city, you engage with and you connect with. And it's been such a specific challenge for me, not in the engagement, but if I'm doing that part where I'm, 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 I'm claiming and I'm recognizing. Mm-hmm. Because oftentimes what happens is if I'm uncomfortable by something, I'm just uncomfortable and I disengage. Mm-hmm. And so I'm not actually yes. stepping into that. Yes. And the moments where I've been in a circumstance where I'm uncomfortable and instead of disassociating, going, okay, I'm uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. Okay, let's recognize that as uncomfortable. Okay, I feel uncomfortable for a reason. Let's find out why. Yeah. And I'm not saying that I do that all the time. I don't even do it half the time. Mm-hmm. But but by by having the opportunity, like because I'm consistently confronted with it and I'm mm-hmm. consistently confronted with my own blind spots and my own emotional responses. It's not something that happens occasionally. It's something that happens regularly, which has been an amazing training ground. And unfortunately I'm a slow learner in all of this. <laughs> it's really easy to go, Oh God, why is this taking so long? But it's in that, it's in that moment where I am willing to claim this is the feeling that I'm having. And that's the moment where I get the opportunity to either by myself or with the folks I work with, like who coach me or my friends who have diverse experiences, that's the moment where I get to start actually understanding the human experience in a different way that gives me the opportunity to, to, to do the work, to take the action piece, which in, in some ways is probably more important than the educating and engagement piece initially, yeah. because yeah. The, the biggest the biggest change I can make is internally. And that's if I can do the most work there, then it makes a difference in how I show up. Yes, Absolutely. And I, and I think that that uncomfortability is so important to not only recognize it within ourselves, but to also have uncomfortable conversations. Mm-hmm. That's where people can become more aware. And yeah. that's where also change can begin to occur. Change starts in conversations, really. Right. Yeah. Even as I wander down the street and I mutter to myself and it comes across as a conversation, it's still pretty limited in its worldview. 
and getting yeah. the opportunity to have other people's perspective. And it's really interesting. I was, I was thinking about a client of mine who, when we have client calls and I'm coaching, Every single suggestion that I have is resisted, resist, 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 resisted, resisted, resisted. Mm -hmm. And then the next day or the day after I get an email and the client goes, okay, I've rethought all of that. And yes. I now recognize this is what is valuable. And I need to explore this question. And instead of just resisting, this is the way I should have pushed back. So it's not like this person is just coming over to my point of view and agreeing with everything I'm saying, mm -hmm. but the conversation is really hard, but it then provides fodder for just because of the way this particular person processes and navigates the world, that's the way they show up in this almost defensive stance or questioning stance because they see problems so quickly but it's because of the conversation it gives them the opportunity to go, okay, at distance, I can see this slightly differently, which allows me to engage with it in a different way. Yeah. I, I think that's useful because in a moment like this, it becomes really easy to feel like our job is to convert people and to win an argument. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oftentimes, like something as trivial as teaching someone tapping. I teach people how to tap all the time. And lots of people are resistant, or I'll talk about it and they'll dismiss it out of hand. But when the fourth person and the seventh person in their life talks about tapping, right? like I did not grow anything. I sprinkled a little water and a little fertilizer on the ground. Mm -hmm. And because it was nurtured by other conversations along the way, it gave them the opportunity to engage it when the seventh time, and they might not even remember the first six times, but just because they've heard it before, it's resonating in a different way because there is this confirmation of social proof inside of that. And so as we are having hard conversations with the people around us to recognize that it's not, it's not a debate where we're trying to score points and where we're trying to win. Yes. And sometimes the fruit and benefit of the conversation does not show up and we may never see the fruit of the conversation and our part in the transformation may never get recognized or give credit just mm -hmm. because it is something that is in the rear view mirror of something that opens them up to a conversation that is where we are. And yeah. so just being able to actually enter in with the spirit of conversation, not debate, not win. And that's, yeah. and, and at this, and at this moment in history, that's so antithetical to the type of conversation <laughs> that we have. Yeah. And, you know, and, and I think, yes, like you said, entering into conversation with the intention of learning and understanding, mm -hmm. I think is yeah. so important. If, if we take away that element of debating or trying to mm -hmm. win and just really enter in with curiosity and wanting to understand and see it from somebody else's point of view, th that, that's yeah. not to say that you end up agreeing with that point of view, but at least enter in to try to see it from that point of view before we make a judgment. <laughs> yeah. And, and then the question that I have found most, the, the goal that I have found most useful in things like that is not to understand what you believe, but to understand why you believe that thing, mm -hmm. because that's yes. significant. That's significantly more important because it gives context to the way that we're showing up, you mm -hmm. know, and how we approach a particular issue. Yes. You know, when we're able to, when we're able to understand the context then, you know, it's easier. Like one, of the, one of the single greatest gifts of being a practitioner has, I, I get the opportunity to hear on a subconscious level why my clients make the choices that they make. And even when they're making really horrible choices, even when they're making choices that they're really ashamed of and they're beating themselves up or they're disappointed in, I, I, I have been able to see, okay, I understand why you made that choice. Like it really might've been the best possible choice you were making at that point because of the resource state that you were in, the resources that you had in the moment. And so trying to understand why now, that doesn't mean that, you know, I let people continue to uphold and push forward things that I know that are unjust, that I'm willing to push back against. But I think if it's going to be a genuine conversation or learning experience, I need to understand why you're coming from where you are. And like, I've been able to have a more fruitful conversation, hopefully, if I understand where you're coming from, because then I understand the context. I don't just understand the stance. I don't just understand the belief. I don't just understand the point of view. I know it's informing it, which immediately gives it nuance. So it makes it easier to navigate. Absolutely. 
Absolutely. I 100% agree with that. Awesome. Mm-hmm. Well, Jay Nicole, thank you very much. Like I said, the instant I saw this, it's just such a beautiful, elegant framework that I just want to have a conversation about it. So thanks so much for sharing it with us. Yeah. Thank you for having me on. This has been wonderful. I hope you found that conversation as useful and fruitful as I did. Um, It is rare that after editing a podcast interview that I go back and re-listen to something. This is one that I've already re-listened to a couple of times and will again in the future as I really just try and break apart that process so I can find ways to show up and away from my clients in a way that is significantly more helpful. And having a conversation with Jay Nicole, she wanted to make sure that I extended to all of you that she has actually created a free create session where you get an opportunity to walk through some of this with her to help you to kind of uncover the places that you are stuck and to figure out the thing that you can do right away so that you end up on a path that is healthier and happier for you and how you show up in the world. For more information on that, all you need to do is look in the show notes. If you happen to be listening to this inside of the app, just go to the notes section. If you were listening to this on the website, if you go down below the web player in Jay Nicole's contact information, the third link that is there is how you can sign up for one of those free conversations. If you know someone in your life who could benefit from a conversation like this, please be our ambassador. Pass it along. Don't spam your inbox and send it to everybody in the world. But if you know someone who could benefit from a conversation like this, please pass it along. If you have questions or comments, I would love to hear from you. I can always be reached gene, G-E-N-E, at tappingqna.com, where you can click on that contact link up above on the top of the website. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to the show and podcasting parlance. Subscribe is always free. You can subscribe in Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Pandora, Spotify, and everywhere you find audio. Make sure you click subscribe or follow or whatever the button is in the app that you're looking at. That way, when a new episode comes out, you are notified and you don't miss any of the great, good, free content that is coming your way every single week. For the Tapping q and podcast, this is Gene Montrestelli. I hope you have a great day, and I will talk to you real soon. Bye-bye. The Tapping Q&A podcast is copyright Gene Montrestelli Tapping Q&A. All views expressed by guests are those of the guests and not necessarily of Gene Montrestelli and Tapping Q&A.